Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining. Sorry about that. We've had a little bit of a technical issue today with the software. And unfortunately, we didn't have our usual 11 a.m. Um, kickoff. Um, some things were happening behind the scenes. So apologies for that. Um, we were frantically racing around just then to get this sorted. Um, so we've managed to send you all an email with the link. Sorry about that. Um, some technical issues. It's the first time we've ever experienced that. Um, everything's been smooth up until today. So um, we've got it sorted now. Everything looks okay and we're back to normal. So we're not too late. Um, uh, it, like I say, it was just at the back end. Um, for some reason, the webinar series has has stopped in the back end when it should have just been continuing every day. So I think we've resolved it, but keep an eye on your emails after this session because we may need to email you again with um, something else, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, it looks like we've got it sorted. Josh came to the rescue. And so, hello, Josh, are you there? Can you join me? He's there, he's there. His, his, his camera's off, but he's, he's coming. Oh, he's, he's, he's going to refresh as well. Well, without further ado, I'm going to get started because we've got a big session today, actually. We've got um, a lot to cover, uh, quite a lot to cover. So, yeah, we're going to be looking at um, uh, email marketing and um, we're going to be looking at promotions and uh, what you can do with your website and what you can do with your emails and various other things. I'll, I'll come to it in a minute. Um, but yeah, if you've just joined, if, you, if this is your first webinar session, well, you need to join and have a look at the, um, the YouTube videos that we've uploaded. Uh, we'll pop the YouTube link in the chat at the end of this webinar. Um, but we've been running webinars every day now for uh, almost two weeks, I think it is. Um, so it's, uh, it's something we're doing every day for small businesses and our customers. Um, it's completely free. Um, there's we're not, nothing in it for us. We're just hoping that you can take some um, tips away from this and get your digital marketing to a new level, um, really start to be in a position where once we get through all this, and it looks like we're coming to the end of this lockdown and, and, and things, but once we get to the end and once we get, everyone gets back to normal, um, we're just wanting to help you get into a position where, yeah, you can be enjoying that influx of new customers, um, you're found online, you've got your website set up properly, you've got some ideas about social media, and maybe some ideas about what you're going to do um, in the coming months. Um, and today's session might help you with that, actually, with things that you might want to do in the next month or two. Um, so I can hear Josh now. So hi, Josh. Hello. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Hi, Josh. Thanks for joining us and thanks for helping fix the technical issue <laughs> just earlier. If you've just joined us, we did have technical issues today. It's the first time this has happened where we couldn't actually go live. Um, really sorry about that. We've managed to fix it. Um, what a nightmare. It was a, a bit of a panic uh, <laughs> situation, as you can imagine, at 11 a.m. So we've managed to fix it and so we are live now. So it's all good. Um, um, we'll get done within the hour, but we've certainly got a lot to cover today. Um, and just to recap, we've been looking at everything from Google to your websites, to your social media, to your Bing listing, your Google listing, um, and then Google ads. Um, and it all really goes back to your website. At the end of the day, all of it kind of centers around your website and how your website um, looks and how easy it is to navigate on your website. Um, and so what I want to do, actually, there's a website there in the center of the screen. Um, oops, what I want to do is um, it is this website. This is the client that I've referred to a few times. Uh, let me just, there we go. Everything seems fine. So, yeah, this is the Aircon for All client. Um, um, we've done many of your websites, so um, we do a lot of your websites already. But this, we, we did this uh, particular style for his website, very commercial, very designed in a certain way um, and uh, I was showing you this one yesterday but the website is at the center of everything it really is at the center of all of your marketing um, and so it's important to get that website um, looking right but most importantly it's, you need to make sure you know what people are doing on your website so yesterday sorry that's just disappeared yesterday we looked at Google Analytics and Google Analytics helps you understand 
behaviors of site visitors. So the behavior of the people that are landing on your website. Um, so um, part <laughs> one is probably going to be five minutes. So it's not going to be um, a, a, a big one. This it's just a quick recap on a couple of things. But part two is where we go into some more detail around um, promotions and things like that. I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. We looked at Google Analytics yesterday and the power of Google Analytics and all the things that you can do in terms of you can even look at people on your website in real time. Where are they clicking? Where are they going to? What are they doing? What age are they? What gender? What mobile? Uh, what device sorry, are they using? Um, Google Analytics really does help people. And this is a um, a case study that uh, resulted in 400% year on year year on year growth by using um, Google by using Google Analytics. So Google Analytics is something that can really help you grow your business, um, and it helps you build a complete picture. It really does help you evaluate your marketing in the most complete possible way. And um, obviously, you can use it on every device. So I encourage you to check out. Google Analytics on your mobile phone. If you are one of those people that's out and about on the go, well, you can have a little look at it on your mobile phone. It's really cool. Um, I am just going to leave this on screen. I'm not going to go through this, um, but I'm leaving it on screen so that when you and if you watch this back or if you want to pause it on this screen, this is um, a kind of checklist to get started on Google Analytics. So we didn't quite get a chance to finish this off yesterday, but we were saying how you can get started on Google Analytics. Well, here's a quick checklist. Um, and so if you're on this, you can pause it and have a look at that later on. Um, but the other thing I didn't go through yesterday was, aside from Google Analytics, there are other things you can do if you are interested, and I just want to spend 30 seconds showing you that you can track where people are looking on your website, where they're moving their mouse, where they are, where they are clicking on, the, on your website, and, it, and you can see this stuff via heat maps. Imagine how cool that would be to see heat maps, like how many people are clicking in a certain area. The more people click in that area, the the red, the hotter it is, and you know, and so on. Well, there, there is a tool, not Google Analytics, but there is another tool I'm just going to introduce you to in a second where you can see heat maps. Um, you can see scroll heat maps. So you can see where the sweet spot is on your website. So, for example, how much are people scrolling? You know, uh, what is the depth that people are scrolling to on your website? Um, because usually there is a prime spot on your website. Um, the sweet spot. Usually there is a place on your website where people are scrolling um, and stopping. And, and, you know, and there's a kind of, you would call that the heap uh, on the right hand side here. You see where it's got the red color? Well, that would be the prime spot to put a call to action button. You know, your call to action button, the placement of the button is really important. And this is where, you know, Google Analytics can help you with this stuff. But this tool that I'm going to um, introduce you to can also help you out with knowing where to put buttons on your website can really change conversion rates dramatically. Um, Amazon and uh, ASOS, or I'm just thinking of all the big brands, you know, um, uh, Airbnb and et cetera, they know exactly where to put their buttons on their websites and they know exactly which color that button should be because and they have a huge team dedicated to this stuff. You know, this is something they'll spend tens of thousands of pounds on every month, um, understanding human behavior and, and where people are clicking the most. Um, the color and the placement of the button can increase conversion rates by 5 10%. And, you know, if you can get, um, I don't know, a thousand pounds from one order, one new customer, if a lifetime value of a customer is a thousand pounds, to say, for example, then one inquiry is it's, it's worth knowing where to put things on your web page exactly. And it's worth spending that time on what we call conversion rate optimization. So all of this is conversion rate optimization. Um, for any customers out there of InfoSurf, to give you some reassurance, if you didn't know this already, me and my team, we are absolutely absolute nerds and geeks at this. So we love this stuff. And we do all this behind the scenes on all of your campaigns. Um, your account manager might not even have revealed this to you or even know that we do this, but 
me and the team love doing this. We love, um, we, ch we, we look at your website, we'll regularly feed back that information to the account manager. And if there's nothing to give back to you, then we, you know, there's nothing to, to no information there. But sometimes we'll, we'll give reports or you can request an audit at any time from us. If you're running a Google Ads or Microsoft Ads campaign with us, InfoServe, this conversion rate optimization is, we, we do this when we're building the campaign. We will look at the website, we'll advise accordingly. We can speak to you um, directly if you want if you want to as well. So you can, you know, you can obviously go for your account manager, but you can, if you want, speak to me and the team, Dan, um, behind the scenes, because we love this stuff and we know exactly how you can get more conversions from your website. So I just wanted to reassure everyone, this is what we do behind the scenes. Um, so if you, if you want to know more about that, um, speak to your account manager, or if you want to set up a, a regular call, you know, if you, if, if you spe if, if you're spending, um, a certain amount with InfraServe, we'd, we'd, you know, we'd love to, sp um, speak to you every say quarter of the year. We could have a check-in and we could go through this with you. We can look at your website. We can install these, um, tracking tools on your website. We can do all this for you. Um, it's completely free, by the way. There's, there's no. So it's just something we really love doing because we know that we can improve conversion rates massively. And these click heat maps really do um, make a huge difference. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, it's it, you can see here. This is the sort of stuff that we see on this tool that we use. I'll come to the tool. I'll come to it in a minute. You can install it yourself for free, by the way. I'll show you it in a second. But you can see there on the tool kind of dashboard, it says 44% of visitors reached this point. So we can even see how far people are going and the percentage of where people are going. So you can see sort of in the red, yellow, it says 75%. Just on the left-hand side of that screenshot, there's a tiny right, it says 75%. Well, um, we know that you know people aren't going below that point on the website and things like that. So we would make sure the buttons, so if you can see those buttons at the top of that screenshot, really faintly behind the red, it's got the three buttons. That's where we would place the buttons or we would advise you to have those buttons. The conversion rate is going to absolutely increase massively um, by doing that. Um, so you know, a scroll heat map is really useful. But also we can track where people are moving their mouse. Um, so you can see the mouse behavior. It's almost like looking at where people, seeing where people are looking. So it's tracking <laughs> human behavior with mouse and almost where they're looking at, at the screen. And that really helps conversion rate optimization. And you can record all of this as well. And the tool um, that you can do this all on where you can record clicks, taps, mouse movement, form fill movement, um, it's hot jar. Um, or you can use Crazy Egg. So either of those tools, um, you can trial them. Um, you can install a code on your website and you can track all of this stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, it's highly recommended. And use that alongside the Google Analytics stuff. So using these alongside Google Analytics. Um, I mean, this is our, you know, I hope you may be picking up the passion here, but this is what we love doing. And conversion rate optimization is, is you know, we, we see huge differences in the number of inquiries that a business will get when you optimize their website for conversions. So if you've got a website elsewhere with another company, or if you're looking at getting your website designed, my biggest advice to you is make sure they are a Google Premier Partner. Make sure the company that you're speaking to, and I'm not just saying this for our benefit, I'm, I'm saying to you, do make sure they're a Google Premier Partner, and if possible, a Microsoft Elite Channel Partner. Uh, so Elite Partner. The reason why I say that is because those are the guys that have trained us to do this stuff precisely to the highest level. Um, there's no other way, um, unless they learn themselves, um, to, to really get this done in a precise way. Um, but the Google Premier Partner Team and the Microsoft Elite Partner Team hold us to account um, to make sure that we're doing certain conversion rate optimization and, and all the best practices. So if you're getting a website designed, um, you, I'm sure you've, you know, you can get a good website elsewhere, really well designed website, looks really nice, look, you know, very attractive. But there's another side to website design that is rarely mentioned um, from what I can see, and that is conversion rate optimization. So our websites are designed for, to look good. 
but they're designed for conversion rate optimization as well. So the website not only is the design, it's the conversion rate optimization, it's also the search engine optimization. So we do three things, design, conversion rates, and search engine optimization. And that's all in our one website design um, uh, package. If it, so if, you, if I could plug our website package, you can, you can have a website from InfoSurf from a, you know, if it, depending on the size of the website, they start from about one hundred and ninety nine pounds. So, uh, and it includes all those three things. Um, so, really, do make sure that your website has good design, um, conversion rate optimization, and search engine optimization as well. Um, so, the three in one offering, um, and that's what all of our websites include. Before I go into the email marketing stuff, I'm just looking, keeping my eye on the time. I've got so much to go through with you guys today. Um, Josh, if I just go back to you, Josh, really, um, and if I just say, Josh, you wanted to just show people the goals on the analytics, and this all does tie in because uh, email uh, marketing or any kind of promotion that you're running, you need to make sure you've got goals set up in Google Analytics. Um, if you can't do that, guys, you know, don't worry. It's not the end of the world, but try, if you can, to get good goals set up. Is there any way, Josh, you can show everyone really quickly, yeah. just really quickly, you know, in a very sort of... Uh, yeah, brief, definitely. Brief. Yeah. I kind of want to uh, tackle a couple of questions as well. Um, yeah. We've been asked, how do you install uh, analytics into your into your website? I'm going to show you how, how easy it is to install it on an InfoServe website. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to set up these goals. Um, so... Following on from yesterday, um, we showed you the overviews of the audience, the acquisition, um, the real time, the behavior and the conversions sections. So um, and I showed you the top metrics to look out for when looking at Google Analytics. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up goals. Um, the reason why goals are so important is because this is exactly how you will track your conversions, your, uh, your form fills, everything like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to launch a screen share and then go into a test account. This doesn't have any data in. I've just made this just now, just so I can show you how to set up goals. So I'm not interfering with anything else that I've previously done. Um, so what you do is this is your home screen on your analytics. As you can see, it says home there. Um, on this left hand side, you have all your different options. You will see an admin. If you don't see this screen, that's because it is like that. So there's a little button down here. You can expand it. Um, right down in the bottom left-hand corner, there is an admin button. So if you click on admin, it will then take you to loads of different settings. Don't worry. The only thing we're looking for is goals, which is on the third column to the right. So you click on goals. And in here, this is where you can set the goals um, <clears throat> that you're wanting to measure and track. Um, so I'm just going to click on new goal. Um, so in here, we have some templates that Google um, have, have thrown in. I believe they've thrown this in recently. Um, they are introducing smart goals as well. I'm not going to go into that. That's more for Google Ads. Um, but basically, you've got loads of different templates to choose from. So you can choose whether you want to track whether people have completed a purchase whether people have um, cr created a successful sign-up, um, they've contacted you, read reviews, got a callback, live chat, updates, um, downloaded and installed a new version. Um, again, there's loads of different options in here, and you've also got a custom option as well. Um, so I'm going to try one of these new th these new templates, and I want to know whether they have uh, contact us, for instance. Um, so I'm going to click continue. And again, you can name this. You can name the goal. I'm just going to leave it as default. Contact us, um, and in here you can choose your type of goals. So as you can see, you've got a destination page. Now, what I would always recommend is having a thank you page for your form fills. Um, that way, when people land on that thank you page, the only way of getting to that thank you page is if they fill out a form. So if you track everyone that lands on that thank you page, you know they filled out a form because that's the only way you can get to it. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. This is what I do on the InfoServe site. Um, this is what I do on City Visitor as well. We track the landing page um, views on just the thank you pages. The only way you can get to those on the site, if you know the URL, which none of you will, um, and obviously if you submit a form. Um, so I'm going to choose destination, but as you can see, you can choose different goals such as duration. If you want people to be on your website for more than five minutes or more, as an example, you can choose whatever time you want. You can set that as a goal. 
Um, you can set a goal as the um, so like three or more or three or more pages that people have viewed per session. Again, we went through pages and sessions yesterday. Um, or you can choose an event. So you can choose if they've decided to play a video. Um, the majority of you will just want to know and track your forms and your phone calls. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, so I'm just going to click continue. Um, and I've chosen destination. I've named my goal. Um, I can choose a goal slot ID if you've got loads of different goals. Um, again, it, it just what I'd recommend is having each goal separate. So just choose a different one when you creating another one. Um, so I'm just going to click continue. Uh, and then here we go. So now I can type in my URL. Um, so I can put in in here, for instance, um, I would always copy it. So I'd always find your your URL and I'd copy it. For this demo, I'm just going to make something up. So HTTPS, uh, I'm just going to put infoserve.com forward slash. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to leave it like that. So then whenever someone lands on that page, it's going to trigger the goal completion. Again, the only way people can reach that on the InfoServe site is if they fill out the form. Um, you can choose a value as well. So this, this is quite good to track um, your potential um, the potential amount of revenue that you can get from um, from your from your customers. Um, if you have a service of uh, boiler installation, for instance, you know on average um, that your boiler installations are one and a half thousand pounds. Um, you can put one thousand five hundred pound, and that's the value of people landing on that thank you page and getting in touch with you on the boiler installation page. Um, so you know uh, that you can assign a monetary value to that conversion, um, and then you can um, track that later on down the line. It's it's mainly for um, uh, uh, online selling, e-com. Um, it's, it's mainly kind of for that, uh, but again, you can still add values to pages depending on if you do a service um, as well. Um, you can also choose, again, this is optional, both the value and the funnel are optional. Um, but you can choose um, the funnel. So what a funnel is, is you can basically set a requirement um, that people have to follow. Um, for instance, if they, um, they they have to go onto your, your, your homepage, for instance, and then they have to read about boiler installations and then they have to fill out the form, you can set that. Um, personally, I haven't really used, um, I've, I've used the funnels, but I don't really use it to measure with anything. Again, it's just a bit of a, a, a stringer, um, step. I'd, I'd recommend that if you were the likes of Curry's PC World, um, big, big kind of e-commerce uh, shops that, that sell online. It's not really for us, the small to medium business. So I'm just going to turn that off. Um, and then you click save. Um, and then once you've clicked save, that is your goal done. Um, and, and really, really nice and easy. So then whenever someone um, lands on that page, it will trigger that goal completion. Um, so that's 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 kind of one way of of, of doing it. Um, and again, you can choose um, a different. Um, you can choose whether they kind of um, phone you, for instance. Um, so we choose whether if they viewed the phone number. Um, you can click uh, custom, um, and then you can you can obviously choose get a call back. So you requested a service or a phone call. Um, and if we click continue there, um, let me just put the phone call, for instance. Um, and then in here, uh, we can choose um, whether we can choose event, for instance, because we're after a, a, an actual event that's happened on the site rather than someone landing on a destination or spending more time or looking at pages. We can choose the event. Um, and then in here, we can choose um, that's, for instance, the event conditions. So a conversion will only be counted if all conditions are set uh, when an event is triggered. Um, and again, you can choose in here um, to choose um, whether you have, uh, if they have, um, for instance, clicked that phone number button. Um, if they've clicked that phone number button, then you know that they have, have called you, especially on mobile. Um, um, again, it's kind of really kind of easy. You can put a category, you can put an action in here. Um, and again, so if you are getting stuck on here, you can always click learn more, which I've just done there. You click learn more and it will tell you kind of about events um, and what you can what you can say uh, and what you can do, for instance. So you can choose whether they've played a video, they've downloaded. Um, 
loads of different options in there. Um, again, you've got, if you want to kind of track people downloading PDFs, um, that kind of stuff. So really kind of cool on what you can do here. You can choose kind of clicks across um, and that's how you track um, whether they've called you is by basically setting up um, whether they have um, chosen to click on the number. Um, and that's how you pretty much set up um, goals. Um, again, form fills and calls are the two most important. Um, again, I'm trying to keep this really nice and, and, and quick for you there. Um, actually, before I go on to there, um, someone asked, how do you um, install Google Analytics? How do you, how do you actually put it onto your website? So let me show you. I'm just going to go on to admin. Um, and then in here, I'm looking for, there we go, tracking info. So all I've done is go to admin and I've gone to tracking info. And then I can choose my tracking code. So I go into here and then here we go. This is the tracking code. Now on a, uh, on an inf uh, on a uh, WordPress site, um, there are some other um cms's that you have to actually put in this code in your header tag again that's getting quite techy i'd speak to your web developer they would be able to do it there are some plugins i tend to stay away from plugins especially with wordpress it just blows up the code for no reason which basically means it slows it down um but i'll show you how easy it is to do on an infoserve website so all of this looks really kind of complex so what i need to do is I'm just going to go on to an example um, vet one that Matt was uh, kind of playing around with and kind of showing off on a webinar. And I'm going to go to settings. So I go into settings. I then go to Google Analytics. And then all it asks me for is the account information um, to track Google Analytics. So then all I do is I go back into analytics and I choose this number up here. This is your unique account number for your analytics. I copy that. I pop that in there. And that's it. Installed. All ready to go. And that is how easy it is to install your Google Analytics onto an InfoServe website. Yeah, I think that's really useful, Josh, because um, we've I've seen a few questions on that as well on the InfoServe website. Everything's really easy to do. Um, it's 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 been done that way on purpose because yeah. you know we we uh, having worked with small businesses for twenty years, um, more than twenty years now, we we know exactly you know the time the the, the time it consumes to, to to do these things on a on a WordPress website or on a um, um, any other type website that you might have um, and we know how complex these things are a small business owner uh, knows their business inside out you know we couldn't manage their business but certainly digital marketing is like a whole new world and and quite a scary one at that so um, yeah if if you know, we, we, we would love to help anyone on their InfoServe website. It is so easy to do. Um, just reach out. Um, if you don't have an InfoServe website, obviously, you know, we can maybe help out with WordPress sites. We, we have got designers that do a lot of work on WordPress as well. Um, but of course, our, our websites start from, you know, less than 200 pounds. So it's definitely worth asking us for a quote. Um, it's not much and it's, it's just worth giving us a shout and seeing, you know, how much would it be to get a new website? Um, it could just be a matter of a few hundred, you know, I don't know, from 200. Um, it might not be much at all. But let's get back to what we were saying. Um, I don't want to um, really don't want to plug our products. In fact, I really hate talking about our product and how much the things cost and things. So, um, yeah, hopefully it's just a bit of help available for everyone if you need it. Um, thanks, Josh. Was there, I think that that's covers the goals really well. Goals are so important um, yeah. when it comes to um, tracking performance of, of your marketing. And it works hand in hand with email marketing as well um, and any other promotions that you run. Um, and the reason why we have to move on quite quickly here, guys, we've got a jam-packed session today, is because a couple of things we want to cover that we, we, we do recommend that everyone does some of these things that I'm going to look at in a minute. Um, because one of the parts of the journey is when consumers go off, they've found your business. Um, so they've gone to your website in the, in the discovery stage. They may maybe found you in the organic results or in the ad results on, on Google or Bing um, or even on Instagram. You know, like I was saying, I, I, I find uh, businesses on Instagram a lot. Um, and 
um, oh, by the way, on the Instagram message, um, if you haven't seen it already, businesses on Instagram now are using mm. a new hashtag. Um, Josh, what's that hashtag on Instagram? It's called support small. That's it. Well, there's two. Um, hashtag support. Well, actually, there might be three. Hashtag support local. Hashtag support small. And hashtag yeah. support small business. Yeah. And so use those hashtags on your Instagram posts because I'm following those hashtags already. So I would see all of your posts in the whole of the UK. You know, so it's, you yeah. make sure you use those hashtags on your posts. Um, yeah. Um, hashtag um, Josh can maybe put them in the chat today um, at some yeah. point. So I'm trying maybe- to find an, uh, an example. I, I already viewed the story this morning. You see, oh, here we are. Support small. Um, yeah, it's, it's just um, my advice. Put put the hashtag in the chat and then um, we'll, yeah. we'll, I think what we'll do is Instagram such a big, we'll be covering more about Instagram in one of the future webinars, aren't we? Because I know you've got something planned on that as well. So we'll, yeah, put, put some of the hashtags in the chat and then, um, yeah, that will help people with that discovery stage. Um, but when people have found your website, um, it's important that you make sure that you're collecting data and information about those visitors uh, as soon as you can. Um, one of the one of the ways that we used to do it was something called. Uh, for, for, uh, hang on a second, let me just. There we go. It was a we used to use this company um, called. They're called Lead Forensics. Now um, I'm not saying that anyone should use this, but because <laughs> they are very expensive, um, I think it's you know four or five hundred pounds a month at least. Um, but the tool itself. Um, what it does is it, it, it basically it helps you turn traffic into leads. Um, and I want you to take note of that word there, the, the phrase sales funnel, uh, because I'm going to come to that funnel in a minute. But it's all about um, knowing who's visiting your website. Um, and this is a tool that helps you find out who's looking at your website. And you can even then um, market to them, back to them later on. So um, you can rapidly identify people that have been on your website. Um, We used to use that um, because you need to know who's visiting your website. But Google Analytics can help you do that. Um, Some of the tools I've shown you earlier and and the goal setting that Josh was showing, that can help you do that. Let's look at the, the bit now, though, where people go and research because um, people have been on your website. They've left your website. We now need to get that remarket to them. We need to hit them with another message. And this is why every small business owner should be considering this. Over 90% of first-time website visitors don't inquire. They don't book. They don't inquire. So every time someone goes on your website or finds your website for the first time, they're more than likely not to call you, inquire, or anything. And that's it. So that's over 90%. So it's important for you to go back and and f- get those visitors and um, market to them. And you reach out to them and you remarket to those people. Um, and one of the ways you can do that, obviously, is through email marketing. But what we need to do, what we need to do on your website is get more people to sign up to your business and your website, right? We, we, we really need to get people to sign up to something. And so if I check out some of your websites, I'm going to say that over 75% of the websites that I look at, I almost guarantee there's no sign up or, um, or anything to encourage me to leave my email address with you. I bet it's just a website with a standard homepage, service page, contact page. What you need to consider is, um, well, email marketing. Um, Email marketing is 40 times more effective than Facebook or Twitter and Twitter combined for new customer acquisition, 40 times more effective. And this is after lots of data and research. Um, Email marketing, um, well, give two thirds of customers have made a purchase as a result of email marketing. So email marketing is really powerful. Um, And uh, what we need to do is we need to help you get more emails and signups so that then you can email them back later on and so you can retarget those people so people are landing on your website in that discovery stage let's get something in front of them on your website so that they leave their email with you so there's six ways there on screen six ways that you can get more signups more emails basically is what i'm saying because when i say signups i should just use the, uh, the word email. That's all we're doing here is we, we want to get more emails. Um, 
So whether that be an offer, number one, an offer, number two, what we call a lead magnet. So you maybe want to come up with some kind of um, ebook or report or study so you can get them to sign up and, and they will get access to your study, to your report, to your blog, to your newsletter, you know, for example. So get people to sign up to get access to that stuff. Um, we, we did it with you guys and look how effective it is. You know, it's, it's, it's not as um, tricking everyone. It's, you know, giving you something back for you giving, you effectively gave us your email and, um, you know, we, 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 we would certainly wouldn't abuse that, but there's a way of getting signups, you know, hold a webinar. Um, so set up a webinar for a month's time. Um, and that webinar could just be an hour long, um, uh, Facebook live, Instagram live, YouTube, go live on YouTube, just get them to leave their email and they can register for that webinar. And it's really easy. And then you'll send them the link later on via an email. Um, make it really easy for people to sign up to this stuff and make it really easy for them to enter their email. Um, and we're going to we're gonna make use of your thank you page as well. So there's something else with your website that you probably haven't considered. I'm going to show you that in a minute. So thank you page. Um, and also invite people from social media, of course. But when you invite people you know, on social media to something, whether it be an offer or whether it be a, um, like I say, a, a newsletter or webinar, you need to create a landing page for them to sign up. You don't just do it through social media. You don't just go, hey, um, please register, please, you know, like our page for, to sign up. No, you need to get them to click on a link to go to a landing page on your website because on that landing page, you're going to collect that data. Um, so it's all about getting more emails. It's all about increasing. So my question to everyone today is how many emails do you have in your database? And how does that database look? Is it healthy? Do you keep up to date with that database? What is your email database looking like? Um, so hope, I'm sure many of you have been in business for many years. Um, it's really important to build up that database of emails and contacts um, because we really need to start email marketing or, or doing something with that email database. And it's all about that funnel. So it's gathering email subscribers via forms and landing pages. So it's gathering those emails and those emails and those, those, that data then goes into your funnel. And then you can send those subscribers targeted, well-timed emails based on their interests to build that trust and authority. Um, and, and then you, your subscribers become your customers. It's as simple as that. Um, so, you know, it, it, this is such a great way of, um, of getting new business and, 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 um, and increasing and growing your business. It is such a powerful way. Like I said, it's far more powerful than Facebook and Twitter, far more powerful. Um, and, and it's, it can be done for free. <laughs> this is, we're, we're showing you how to do it. Um, and this is, you know, you can do this yourself for free. Um, and so, to get people to leave their email with you, why not create a pop-up on your website like this example here? Um, that website pop-up could be an offer. You know, create an offer to, and make it easy for them to sign up. Um, another offer here, another example, 10% off. Um, and, uh, you know, a very simple pop-up. Another offer, another example there, 10% off. Um, or create what we call a lead magnet. So um, the pop-up could be more uh, uh, orientated around, um, you know, do you want to, do you want exclusive first, um, first, uh, you know, insights into our new products or services or whatever it may be, you know, so a lead magnet is something that people get value from. So enter your email to get, um, our most popular blog content all the time or enter your, e enter your email here and um, sign up to our free webinar or enter your email to get access to our industry study on um, builders or whatever, estate agents. I don't know. Think of some content. Think of something that's in valuable for your audience and get them to sign up for that content. Don't just give people all of the best content all the time you must try and get their email. Um, so these kind of website pop-ups can be really a great way of, of doing that. So are you doing that on your website? Do you have something that comes up 
Um, don't make it too in your face. It doesn't have to be. T- and, and this is okay. This is really um, acceptable. Most people will either just click off the, this block, this this pop up, or the, they will enter their email. There's no people won't leave your website in anger because there's a pop up like this. So don't worry. It won't lower conversion rates in such a way that it's going to de- be detrimental. But what it will do is it will give you more emails, and uh, and that is far more valuable than not doing anything at all. So um, do you have this kind of thing on your website um, if you can't think of an offer or if you're that if you're that type of business that doesn't run special offers so I don't know maybe you're an estate agent or maybe um, I, I don't know okay but you, you know off special offers aren't the thing well just try and think outside the box come up with something that that adds value right you think always think of what's in it for me from the consumer's point of view and in the industry, that's called WIFM, W-I-I-F-M, what's in it for me. That's what the consumer's always thinking. So think of something that you can give to your visitors that is going to be valuable to them. Um, and you can maybe give it away for free. Whether it's the first 30 minutes free or free quote, whatever it may be, get this kind of um, data, this email data. Um, Another thing you can do um, is use the thank you page. Um, So, for example, let me just go back a second. So someone's given their email to you in one of of these kind of pop-ups. They type their email in. They click yes. And then where do they go? Well, you could send them from that pop-up to a thank you page. Okay. And I would recommend that you do that. Um, uh, or even if it's from a contact, even a contact form on your website. So, you know, when you've got your contact forms on your contact page, why not create a thank you page? Um, Josh, if you can, in the background, load up um, that uh, fake vet website for me um, and uh, and go to a contact form, and I'll show you it in a second on the contact form, how you can do it on the InfoServe website. But create a thank you page. Um, um, so, so you can use the thank you page space because you've already got their interest. Think about it. They're, they're already interested. In so why not then surface another offer or a stronger call to action on that thank you page? Why not do what Amazon do? Because Amazon clearly know what they're doing when it comes to conversion rates and, and website optimization. If you look at when you buy something from Amazon, you'll always be surfaced with a, um, oh, you might also be interested in this. Or this might also be of interest to you. So why not do the same on a thank you page? So if you're a, I don't know, even if you're, I'm going to think of the worst business example, the most the most difficult business example I can think of from the top of my head would be a builder. Someone fills out a contact form on a builder's website just because they want to get a, a call back because they're thinking about getting their house done or their loft done or their driveway done. Um, why not on that thank you page, go, you know, you could probably go um, and say something like, hey, have you considered um, um, replacing your windows? <laughs> and you might have an affiliation with a local window, in, uh, comp- um, a, a guy that installs windows. Or I don't know, I'm just thinking outside the box here, a gardener, you know, do you need your gardening done at the same time? And you might have a, you know, um, and, and you might have an affiliation going on, whatever it may be, you know, you can then surface um, relevant um, offers and, and, and ideas to people when they are um, on the thank you page. Um, so just, Josh, if you just want to share your screen quickly and um, I just want to show everyone. Um, yep. So I've had uh, to... Whilst you're doing it, uh, Gareth put a good point in. I think an email database is healthy, but we don't tend to use it for marketing. I think it's reluctant to sometimes find marketing emails intrusive or frustrat- frustrating. Uh, Gareth, I completely agree. And that's why you should not um, email people more than, uh, you know, once a week. Um, They can be intrusive and frustrating. But that's why your email content has got to be valuable to that um, to that uh, receiver. Um, So the person that receiving the email. And so don't just go in with an offer or pushing your product, because if you keep pushing your product, nobody, everyone's going to turn off. Everyone's switching off. But Gareth, I would ask you this. Are you taking anything away from these webinars and are you learning anything? Is it it's by you giving us your email address? Has that been valuable to you? Um, well, I'm hoping you would probably say yes to that. But if I sent you an email, Gareth, in say a month's time and said, hey, Gareth, here's seven tips to improve your website optimization. And I gave you those seven tips on the email. You would also find that really useful. And that trust and, and that relationship hopefully is then there and built. 
And, and then I could do another email to a week later saying, here's how you should line up your website to Google, you know, and then only then a month down the line or two months, I could maybe send you an email saying, Gareth, we've got a 20% off offer on our websites at the moment. That I don't think you would be turned away from that or turned off by that kind of journey because it's all about um, building that um, trust between you and the um, and your consumer and giving value. You've got to work hard to build value before you start email marketing them with offers and intrusive emails. And because I completely agree, I feel exactly the same as you. But um, it takes a little bit of effort to to build that trust up. Um, so just on the thank you page, Josh, uh, just go to pages tab on the left quickly. Just remind everyone, um, don't, you don't have to click on it, but if you wanted to create a thank you page, um, all you do is click new page um, and then you would label that as a um, thank you page. So if you, but you can go off that for now, Josh, and we'll just go to a contact um, form on the website again. Um, so we're just going to go to a contact form. If you click on that contact form for me um, and then on the submission tab, um, Submission actions, is it? Let's have a look. Um, even, even, uh, there we go. That's the one. Redirect people to a page after submission. If you click that, so you can then select your page that you've created, your thank you page. It's as simple as that. So really easy to redirect people to a page after submitting their form. Now, even if you don't want to do um, email marketing, if none of you want to do email marketing, that's okay. Use, make sure you use a thank you page at the very least on your website. Um, with thank you pages, like I say, you can, you can have relevant offers or, or, or messages, um, really carefully thought out messages. But also what you can do is um, with Google Analytics, it's easier to track um, form fills when you have a thank you page. Because what a lot of these analytical tools need is a link. Um, you need to give a link, basically, a URL um, that for, for the tracking of conversions. Now, if you don't have a thank you page... There's no URL that people, there's no end URL, if this makes sense. But with a thank you page, you've got a kind of end URL. So if you gave that URL to Google Analytics or an analytics tool and say, here, here, here's what I want you to track. How many people go to this URL? Well, because it's a thank you page hidden from everyone, you, you know that people going to that thank you page, they've made an inquiry with you and you're now tracking inquiries. I hope that mm -hmm. makes sense to everyone. By yeah. having a thank you page, you can track inquiries really easily. Um, yeah. So there's one thing to consider. But yeah, that's, um, that's a, a, a really um, useful tip. I'm just going to go back to the screen sharing, Josh, if that's okay. Yep. Cool. Thanks. Um, so yeah, use that thank you page. Um, and uh, if you are trying to get people from social media, if you want to get emails from people on your social media channels, create a landing page on your website. So those landing pages, we've covered it before, but you've got to have a really clear headline. Um, with your offer or with your um, message and then obviously a simple contact form right at the top. Make sure your contact form's really high up on that landing page um, and use bullet points. So you've got the headline, you've got a bit of information underneath the headline, but then you've got bullet points that describe the offer or really, if, if, you, can, if you can, the benefits of signing up. So always do always think about the with them, what's in it for me. So I'm a consumer, what's in it for me? Always start with the benefits. Always show people the benefit of signing up or doing um, X, Y, Z, whatever it may be. It's a classic um, mistake that people um, overlook, even in marketing, even, you know, even the experts like us. It is so di difficult to, to remember to start with the benefit. So um, I mentioned that we're a Google Premier Partner. Who cares? You know what? What does that mean to to, to what does that mean to the average small business owner? Nothing. Um, so what I would should do in marketing to 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 tell you about us being a Google Premier Partner, I should say I should start with the benefit. So the benefit is, oh hey everyone, um, we can help you get a better return on investment from your Google ads. We can get you more money from your Google ads, more leads. How we can do that is because we're a Google Premier Partner. So Josh, sorry, you just wanna mute yourself, sorry. Sorry, sorry Josh. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Um, instead of going, instead of starting with the, the feature, so, um, you know, 
get 20% off or whatever. Think about the benefit or, or whatever it is you're doing, you know, webinar or, or, or um, a blog. What is the benefit of me signing up to your blog? So, for example, start with the learn how to do X, Y, Z and save hundreds of pounds. Sign up to our blog today. Does that make sense? So um, that's, that, that is the way to kind of market yourself in all walks of life, whether it be on your website, whether it be on your Facebook, Instagram, whatever you're doing online as a business, always start with the benefit or think of the benefit before you're thinking about the actual thing that you're doing, the feature or this or the um, product or service or promotion. Um, so that's kind of like a, a big marketing tip, I would say. Um, and so when we're telling you that we're a Google Premium Partner, we should actually say, hey, we can get you a higher return on investment. We can get you a better managed campaign um, directly through Google um, because we're a Google Premier Partner. Um, OK, so it's all back to that funnel. It's all about getting people in, getting emails um, sorry, from subscribers and then using that um, subscriber list with well-timed emails. And so I think it was Gareth that mentioned um, about the skeptical is he's skeptical about emailing and, and you know, um, being uh, dis kind of disruptive to people, um, et cetera, et cetera. Well, as long as it's well-timed and it's um, there, it's in their interest, um, you need to make sure you're building that trust and, and authority. And, and that by building trust and authority with your um, database or with your consumer, that really then puts you in a strong position. So I completely agree product emails, offer emails all the time is really annoying. Um, but, but start and build that trust and authority. Um, okay. So the email itself, or I suppose it's, oops, hang on. There we go. The creating the email. Um, well, there's a number of, um, there's a number of tips, um, seven, not six. I've, I've got the wrong number there. It's seven tips to improve email engage. I'm not going to go through this. I'm just going to leave it on screen, but some of the big, big kind of things here are you've got to make sure you send it at the right time and on the right day. So Tuesdays and Wednesdays um, are usually the better days to do that. Um, stick to one topic in your emails or your promotions. This applies to many different things as well, guys. This applies to even social media. So stick to one topic if you're doing a promotion. Um, choose images that work on mobile phones um yeah i'm just having a look um personalization is key as well and that's something you can do with emailing is personalizing the emails um so what i'm going to do is actually go into a live demonstration um so infoserve uh we use um well we have our own but it's basically using um something called Campaign Monitor. So we've partnered with Campaign Monitor. Um, you could use Campaign Monitor or you could use something called MailChimp. Um, both are free as well. So that's why I'm showing you this. So if you'll just go to the pricing on MailChimp, well, look, the free option on the right-hand side, um, that has enough there to get you started you don't need to do much more or you've got this one at 9.99 a month i mean that's i spend 99.99 a, a day probably on on lunch let's say so it's it's you know these these are really cool tools and i'd recommend them to anyone um, we use one called campaign monitor it's equally as good um but let me just show you how um, you should set up your email um, as quickly as I can. Um, these are very sort of the basic essentials as well. We could go into more detail here, but these are some of the essentials. Um, so when I'm setting up an email, um, I can just do a regular email or I can do something called an A-B test. An A-B test is another word, another phrase is split test. And what happens when you do an A-B test is you can split test um, two different emails or two very similar emails, but slightly different messages um, or subject lines. So I can create a subject line for version A and a different subject line for version B. Both maybe have the same email, but they have um, two different subjects. And what the software does, this is completely free, what the software does is it will send the email with these two different tests to say, I don't know, a quarter of your audience and it'll send the winner to the rest of your audience. So maybe, you know, the, the other thousand or 5,000 emails that you've got, it will then send the best performing one to the rest. So you can do a little split test 
And I would recommend always doing that if you can. Um, so an A-B test, and then it will automatically send the winner to the rest of the database. Um, it's really cool. Just for this, I'm just going to do one, um, one test here. Um, your subject obviously needs to be um, compelling and, uh, and build value. Um, so, uh, you know, I said to you about the benefits um, I don't know, get more inquiries from, you know, this is sort of thing we would write or for you, learn how to uh, make your own, da, 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 da. I don't, you know, I, the example would continue. Um, when you're sending an email, you probably want to send this email three times. Um, so I'm just going to put a test, but you probably want to send this email three times in one month. So it's, the first two are very similar. There, there's not much difference between the first two. But if you're running a promotion, the last email, the last email would say something like last chance. You, you'll see this often in email marketing or last chance to get, um, I don't know, 30% off, for example. Notice how I use the capitals on each word. I don't tend to do it on two but on all the other words i'm using um, capital letters and that's the kind of thing you want to do on the third and final email in that month so you probably if you're sending a newsletter you need to send that three times because a lot of people won't open it on the first one or even the second one um, but they might do on the third one on the third one you might just want to change that wording slightly to create a bit more Ooh, you know last chance or um, only a few days left to You'll see it all the time. Um, you know, we all see it in our emails. I mean, I, I open emails. All, I had one from um, Habitat, you know, I, I, <laughs> uh, furniture. I'm into my furniture interiors. And, and I saw one from Habitat. And it was kind of like final, last few, uh, last day to get X. And it, it made me click. And I actually bought something on the back of that email. So it do, they do really work. And that final email is that final chance to get um, people in. So use the subject line carefully. Um, if you can, you can even add personalizations. So if you can add a personalization, that would be unbelievable. So how do I add a personalization? Well, in your email database, you've obviously got all these emails. If you can, try and collect people's first name. So if you can, if, if in your signups or in your email database, try and have a column so you've got the first name and then you've got their email in another column. So make sure you try and get their first name. And the reason for that is because if you, like I said earlier, if your email is friendly as if you're talking to a friend, then you get far greater open rates on those kind of emails. So, um, hey. Oops. So what would this show on my email if i if i received this email what would happen well it would say hey matt um uh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put customer <laughs> um it would say hey matt uh, because i you've collected my name matt um and it would say hey matt here's 10 percent off i would open that email probably if you haven't got the, someone's name these email softwares have fallback message so i would just put hey there here's 10% off. So if you haven't got a column with their, if, if in your column, you've got some customers that you've got their first name, but on some of your customers, you have managed to collect their first name. Don't worry, you can have a fallback. Notice how easy it was for me to do all this. Um, let me just delete what I did there. Um, it's all within the software. I don't have to do any technical work or have any great knowledge to do this. Um, I just put my cursor there, include, um, include last name or include first name. And uh, there we go. It's adding, it's adding the code for me. So I'm just going to get rid of the, because I've messed this up now because I've been doing it so much. But you can see it's got to go there. And um, hey, Matt, or fallback is there. I don't want it to say customer. Hey, customer. That doesn't sound very good, does it? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's really easy to add personalization into subject. And I'd recommend if you can to do that. The next thing, what is pre-header text? Well, the preview text is displayed on some inboxes. Now, this is really amazing on iPhone. If you've got an iPhone, if you go to your emails on iPhone, on my emails, um, I'm looking through them all. And on every single email, there's a bit of a preview line underneath the subject line. And that is what goes in here. Um, 
you know, and so on and so. On. So use that preview line again um, as, as 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 intelligently as you can to to kind of get attention, get get open rates, increase those open rates. So the preview is what shows literally on the inbox of the email. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and go to the actual email design because I want to. Sh- this will this will only take a minute. Um, but what I want to do is show you these kind of email um, software. They already have designs done for you, and they've already got templates built. And so you can go and click any of the, their designs and templates, um, and uh, and you can just edit it really easily. So I'm just going to click on the first one I see here and click through to the email and just use the templates that they give you in the uh, email software. So all I would do is drag our logo in here. So I'd pop out, put out logo and then you've got the clear headline text, a bit of a sub um, subtext there. And then, um, you know, a little bit about the product. I can change that image, obviously. Um, you know, I can go ahead and change that image. And then I've got the call to action button here. It's already done for you. The email needs to be really simple. Keep your email as simple and, um, and straightforward as you can. Um, when someone clicks on this button, that's when they go to the landing page on your website or the particular page on your website. And on that page on your website, that's where you're going to have more of the content, a little bit more detail about the thing that you're talking about. Keep the email as simple as you can, but on the landing page, have that detail um, right there for them to read if they want to. Um, so it's as simple as this. Um, simple email, a simple button. In fact, I'd probably have another button at the top in case that person doesn't see the button here. So I'd have the button in two places um, and I'd have the same call to action. Is it? No, it's just a, uh, I've, I've, <laughs> I've written it differently. So I'd have the same call to action. It needs to match exactly like the one below. Um, and and then have that linking to your landing page. So um, obviously that's missing a link at the moment, but um, make it really easy for people to sign up or learn more or even order now. Um, and, uh, and note at the very top of the email, there is that preview text that I was doing on the, pre- on the previous screen. So that preview text, which will show in the inbox of, um, on, my, on my phone or computer, that is the first thing I'll read in my inbox. And so make sure you're using that. Maybe get the benefits in there, get, get the, you know, the, the what's in it for me kind of message. Um, if you've not got it in the subject line, you've got an opportunity to put it in the preview line. So make it really simple there. Um, let's not forget what I said. Um, the copy, stick to one subject. And make sure the images are good for mobile phones. Um, so, they, so you can always preview these emails um, on mobile phone, like so. There we go. So you can always preview these things on different devices. Um, call to action should lead to um, the offer. And, and the call to action, the button, should really stand out, um, like so. And then um, make sure you time it right. Um, Obviously, most emails are opened on mobile phones, so bear that in mind. And we've talked about that personalization. What I haven't touched on just yet is um, the final thing I'd like to say is if you want to add personalization into the email, then that's a good way. Um, that's a really useful thing to do. It really does get more engagement. So here on this particular email software, it, again, it's really easy to do on any email software. I can insert personalization. There we go. Um, I'm just going to put, there we go. So it would be, hi, Matt, um, comma, or hi there. We're just two days away from blah, 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 blah. You know, it's stuff like that. That that kind of stuff really, that personalization adds a lot of, uh, well, it, sorry, it increases conversion rates um, way, way more than when you don't use personalization. So personalization is key um, and keep the subject line clear actionable and enticing so really make it clear and and simple um really simple stuff really just touching on the basics there guys um but um that was the demo and i just want to say if you need any help with this just reach out to us at infoserve.com forward slash support. If you haven't got time to do any of this, um, we could do your email for you. Um, 
it, it would probably take us a couple of hours, um, I'd say, um, a, a, in, a, in a month to do it. Um, we probably only charge £50 an hour. So, you know, it's not going to cost you much at all if you want us to do it. Um, maybe two or three hours most. Um, so we know, you know, we're, 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 we're there, we're available, we can help you. Um, obviously, give it a go yourself. Um, have a look at MailChimp, have a look at Campaign Monitor and get those pop-ups or get those messages on your website or something on your website that gets people to give their email address and sign up and think about the thank you page on your website as well the thank you page is really um a good tip from us today okay so it's 20 past 12 um and we all need our lunch so um hopefully josh has been picking up some of the questions um within the chat um, what email software? We're using Campaign Monitor um, ourselves. We use Campaign Monitor. We have to pay a lot more than what you guys would pay for that. Our email list is is something around fifty thousand emails. But you know, you you probably get all have maybe a thousand up to five thousand emails. So it won't cost. It will probably cost you nine, ten pounds a month. Um, if you wanted to really go further with email marketing. Um, but I'd recommend spending up to 50 pounds at least um, on email marketing. Um, the hashtags we talked about earlier was for Instagram. There's hashtags that every, every small business is using now on Instagram and they were um, hashtag support small business. So if you go to Instagram, yourself and click on the on the magnifying glass on Instagram, the, at the bottom of Instagram, um, in the search bar at the top, then search for hashtag support small business or hashtag support local or hashtag um, small business, small business. What was it, Josh? Hashtag support small. So there's, yeah, so there's a um, similar to what happened with the stay at home logo. Everyone yeah. had a stay at home logo. They've got a support small logo. So whenever you put up a post, um, so you can actually put up a story and then you can attach this image, which is support small. And you can choose other businesses to give a shout out to. Um, I viewed the story earlier. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to flick through and find it just to show you. Um, but it's it, it, I live in the Harrogate area, and there's loads of businesses all using this hashtag at the moment. It's it's kind of a hashtag. It's it's Instagram releases these features sometimes. So they did it for when we first went into lockdown for stay at home, and now they're doing it for support small. Um, I really want to show you. I'll tell you what, um, in our next webinar, I'll take a screenshot and I'll show you. Um, so then I can show you on the actual screen rather than me holding up my phone yeah. to the camera. Yeah. Um, and we'll yeah. talk about it in, in, in more depth. Okay. And um, yeah, just whilst we've got a couple of seconds left, um, uh, somebody asked about um, avoiding spam filters on email when you're email marketing. Um, absolutely. Some of these emails will go to junk and spam and many people will ignore your email. But the more personalized and the more um, benefit heavy your email is or whatever you're doing, um, the, genuinely, the more opens and the more engagement you will get. Um, but what I would also recommend you do in your email platform is you authenticate your um your domain, your email sender. So we've done it. Um, if you simply go to the settings on your email platform, for any of you interested in this kind of more technical side of things, you don't have to do this. But if you do authenticate then um, the domain, then uh, you really do start to avoid spam filters and junk filters more. Um, and so uh, we've added infoserve.com and we've verified that. And uh, now when we send an email, we get a 100% rating green, or which is basically avoiding spam filters and junk um, email filters. So yeah, try and authenticate your domain hmm. if you can. Um, that's just a tip there to help um, to help with uh, avoiding junk mail. So we we will um, leave it there and we'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. If you need any help, um, just go to um, infoserve.com forward slash support. If you've missed any previous webinars, um, I'm going to put the link now into the chat. Um, we still do have to upload um, one or two latest ones. Josh has got that to do today. So, so we'll, we'll definitely do it. It's, it's the worst job, isn't it, Josh? Because you've got to download the video and then you've got to upload. It's, it's pain, painstakingly 
time consuming. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll upload all the videos. We'll get on top of that today or tomorrow at the very latest. But um, there's the link to all the other webinar um, videos. Hopefully um, this has been helpful. Nigel, yes. Um, apologies if you haven't got that already. We will chase that up for you. We know we can, we can track um, from here and we'll have a look in our um, inbox. Um, I've not seen many get overlooked. So it might just be yours is on the list to be done or possibly has been overlooked. Apologies for that, Nigel, but we will definitely chase it up. If anyone wants an SEO review or a digital marketing audit, um, we can do that for you um, at the moment um, for free. So just use the infoserve.com forward slash um, support link and we can a, run a check for you on your um, digital marketing, which will cover lots of different um, elements of your website, like so, um, the titles, descriptions, it'll show you what's wrong with those bits and bobs, your social media, um, your citations as well. So it'll actually show you where you're missing um, in terms of local listings and citations, which we've talked about in previous webinars. So yeah, please do reach out to us. I've lost the screen share there. It's gone. But yeah, that's a digital marketing audit. Um, great stuff. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, have a nice lunch. Have a lovely day. And I'm um, looking out the window. It's a bit overcast here up in North Yorkshire. Um, but we'll have a nice little walk and we'll have a bit of lunch. And we'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Um, for more big tips coming this week. We're going into far more detail this week. Hopefully it's been useful. Keep an eye on your emails. We had some technical issues today. Started a bit later. We might have to send an email out to you all with a link. Looks like Josh is nodding his head. He's having a bit of a nightmare with this link situation. So we may need to send a new link out to you today. Um, so please keep an eye on your email inbox. And we'll see you tomorrow. My name is Matt, um, Operations Manager at InfoServe. That's Josh, Josh Gill, Lead Marketing at InfoServe. And for me and all the team um, who are... We've got dozens and dozens of us dotted, dotted around Yorkshire, North Yorkshire, all working really hard to bring you these. Um, I will get them onto these webinars soon, but I hopefully hope this has been useful for you. Um, see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Bye-bye. Thank you.